Hi there. Welcome to Life is All About Choices. I am your host, Nancy Muller, and this is yet another opportunity for me to live my mission, which is to have empowering conversations on a daily basis that motivate and inspire myself and others. And here today with me is Vince Kramer, and he's going to help me do just that. Vince, welcome. Thank you, Nancy. It's so good to be here. I, I'm all excited to, to start sharing and, and really getting into a conversation that I'm sure will make a difference in people's lives. It will, I know. And I just have to say that um, be, before we go any farther, I, I want people to really, really, really know how the universe works. Okay. So I met a woman on Facebook. Her name is Christine. Shout out to Christine. Hi, and Christine. She said, oh, I have to introduce you to my friend, Vince. So I looked up Vince's profile, and lo and behold, we have many mutual friends, most of which are my friends in my own backyard in California. So it was not lost on me to think about the universe using someone in Germany to connect with me in California, to connect with people in my own backyard. And Vince, I think I started a conversation with you when we first talked about that. Yeah, you sure did. And it's interesting. Um, uh, pardon the uh, airplanes. I, I live close to uh, uh, a few runways here. And, and as you know, as an airline pilot, uh, it's kind of exciting for me to live. There you go. There you go. So I apologize for the sign, the sounds. But yes, um, we, we do run in the same circles. And, and I, I think part of the reason we're running in the same circles is because I think we have the same divine intent, the, the same mission or why, as people call it, on earth. And uh, there's nothing wrong with running with super people who help empower you and you're able to help empower. Exactly. But the reason that I wanted to share that story was just what you said. I, I really hope people take what you just said, because when you're in flow, the universe will know. So what does that mean? It's when you're totally letting go and you are fluid like water, you're in flow, you're, you're open to what the universe is bringing to you, all the abundance, all the prosperity, all the love, all the all, the all that the universe can bring to you. But as human beings, we're so like tight and we're like, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to make this happen. And if this doesn't happen, what am I going to do? And we're so conditioned to live life the hard way when learning to be in flow is the easy way. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Excellent. Excellent. So Vince, before we go any farther, can you tell everyone who you are, what you do and why you're so fabulous? Well, let me see. I'm fabulous because uh, my wife and I started a business called Imagine Miracles, and it's based on about eight years of us doing our work, truly digging into what is life about, who are we, how do we operate as energy, how does the universe talk to us, how does that all come together so we can live the divine intent or the mission that we're here to live fully and how can we open ourselves up and shine our light out so other people can start shining their lights out i think we're all just part a uh, piece in the in the big puzzle of life the big puzzle of the universe source creation god whatever you want to call it we're we're a piece we're a puzzle piece in that and for others to fit in and to really shine out their gifts and talents in the world, we need to bring ours to the world. So uh, Imagine Miracles is all about that, taking you from ground zero all, all the way up to living the life that you deserve, the life that you're meant to live. And it's based on truly us looking at who we were, how we were living life, what we didn't understand, and then bringing it all together in one place because it took us eight, 10 years, because we had to look for things. We had to look for the mentors. We had to look for the, the information. We had to trust in downloading information from source so, so we could bring it. And I don't want anybody to have to go through that long procedure unless you choose to. If you choose to, um, I, I understand. And sometimes we, we grow even further by going through those long drawn out procedures for ourselves. But if we can help just a handful of people 
find it much quicker, you know, awaken to who they are, understand what awakening means and, and how they can do it with a heck of a lot less pain than I did. Um, I think that would be so awesome. And then I get to live another passion too. I'm a major airline pilot. I get to uh, fly 20 days a month and, and enjoy uh, slipping the surly bonds of earth and, and really feeling the freedom of flying. So the, the opportunity to live two passions and to truly live what I knew even way back at five years old, what I was supposed to be doing because I would lay on the grass watch airplanes fly over, knowing I wanted to be a pilot, but at the same time, I felt this yank or pull to help people love themselves so they could love each other. That's so beautiful, and I love that you knew it at five. You may not have known how to go about what your knowing was, but you knew it, and you could track it back to then. I will share with you, Nancy, I worked really hard to forget it all, all through my life, to be honest with you. Um, I've, I forgot it at about five, six, seven years old. I think about seven when my grandfather and my father taught me what it was like to be a man, what a real man was supposed to look like. Um, my grandfather was a compete at all costs, be number one, you know, step on everybody. Um, I never did a lot of stepping on everybody. I, matter of fact, I don't think I stepped on anybody on my way up anywhere. But I did achieve, and I was always looking for that next thing to make the, the something missing feeling go away. Uh, my grandmother then at 17 years old, just, to, uh, just before she died on her deathbed, she shared with me what I had told her as a five-year-old, that I wanted people to love themselves so they could love each other. And then once again, I went right back into forgetting. So I, I forgot it again up until uh, about 48 years old. I I, um, I have a similar story. When I was, uh, I guess it was 12, whatever age you are, 14 maybe, in high school, a woman came to our high school to talk at an assembly, and her message was to keep us off drugs. And so she was sharing this horrific story about going to jail and her drug use. And I remember thinking at that exact time, that's what I want to do. That's what I am going to do. I am going to stand in front of people, and I'm going to share a message that's so powerful it's going to impact their life. And then I forgot it, <laughs> you know, because we don't believe in ourselves. We, and especially if we don't have others who believe in us or we're not surrounded by parents or caregivers who understand the basis of encouraging that, um, that knowing or that ability, because, you know, most of us have parents that come from a fear-based mentality and so they can only teach what they were taught. Well, and, and you know, we can't fault anybody for that. They were doing everything that they could to provide us an opportunity to have a life that they thought would be better than, than they had themselves. And, you know, I'm a firm believer, Nancy, in that there are no mistakes or coincidences in the world. Quantum physics tells us that. I mean, the scientists wrote it right out there for us. And I think we had to experience everything that we, we experienced. I, ha I, we, I had to forget. I, if, if I remembered and stayed as pure and as open-hearted as I was at five years old, I don't think I would have the life experiences and I wouldn't have the ability to raise the flag sometimes when people that I'm coaching or when we're in large groups, I, I, I have to be able to get to that place to say, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. And, mm -hmm. and this is my experience to show you why I no longer agree with that. Exactly. I say over and over and over again, if you are an adult and you are still blaming your parents for where you think you are in your life, that's like the first thing that you want to stop because that's not getting you anywhere. Nowhere. That's one of the, the major things that we do in uh, several of our Imagine Miracles courses we go through a procedure to take you back to a lot of circumstances that that truly created those beliefs. I know you you love working with beliefs, but that truly created those beliefs and and work at finding the gift in them. Mm -hmm. But I, I 
we, we definitely want to help and we definitely help people reframe their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're working from the empowered ones, but there's so many circumstances in our lives that happen to us that, well, all the, all the circumstances in our lives truly, truly bring a gift into our life and, and help us develop a certain part of us or, or open the door somewhere down the road for us to, to really, as I said, shine our light out into the world. So we, we go through in several of our programs, let's look at these circumstances. Let's find that place where you felt like you were a victim and let's find a gift in it because that's where your power comes from, not, not from the easy times. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. So explain um, just for those watching, what does that mean? when you teach to shine your light? Well, one of the, the most important things that uh, I feel is going on in the world, and like I sh shared before, I think we all need to share who we are so others can share themselves. I think so many of us believe that we have no control over our lives. And we believe that we have to look a certain way because our, our parents told us that's the way we should look. The school told us that's the way we should look and act. Uh, books. Uh, one of the big things for me when I was growing up is to go out and find the people that you want to most be like in the world and grab their books and learn how to be them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what I've found, especially through the work that we've we've done really digging into ourselves so we could stand on a stage and share with somebody that you are unique and, and there's no one like you and we need you. I, I had to learn that it's each individual and who they are. Yes, there are gifts and talents that are very similar to everyone else, but you've got to discover yourself because you're so amazing. Yes. I, you yes, know, I, I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are, you are. And there's so much that you have to offer the, the world. So when I say we help people shine their light, I think the most important thing is to, is to help people find the connection to who they truly are, mm -hmm. to really go to that place where they understand, first of all, uh, what we call the your quintessence, the real and concentrated essence of you that you shine out into the world. You've been you've been shining that out all the time and people feel it. Yeah. And they know who you are. And then when we bring a personality that we we develop because we thought that's who people wanted us to be, now there's some discord. People yeah. aren't understanding. Why why do I feel this? But then you're this way, and now they stop trusting you or or they don't want to hang around with you. And and once you find out who you are and find out that you're shining something so special out into the world, uh, mine is gentle power. My quintessence is gentle power. And um, people feel that when I walk in the room, they feel safe. I'm 6'4", six, 6'5", <laughs> six, actually, and, and about 235 pounds. So I'm not a little guy. So when I walk in the room, you know, first of all, that when you see me, it's like, oh my God, this is this big guy, but then I love people so much and I want to make sure everybody's comfortable and safe and feels good. So um, I, I got that understanding from some of the work that we do, but also so many people told me, you know, we, we, you're so loving. How can you be so loving being so big? So I learned my quintessence that way. Mm -hmm. We all have got that quintessence and, and we're shining it out and we've got to accept that. And uh, so I want to help you find it, but I want you to find it. I want you to find it inside yourself. I want you to tap into your guidance and really understand the, the three parts of your purpose, the quintessence, the gift that you bring, and your divine intent, because that's where joy comes from. That's where our bliss is going to come from, living what we're supposed to be living here. And we chose it. We mm -hmm. just forgot it. Exactly. We do a lot of forgetting in our childhood. Exactly. Oh, yes. You know, we both have a very, uh, some really great stories about our background with Jack Canfield, what he means to me in my life and what he means to you in your life. Um, and one of the things that I can remember, um, I, when I got a hold of a cassette tape of his in the 80s, what does that tell you? Like how long ago that was? Um, and I listened to this tape over and over and over again. And that was my first 
indoctrination, if you will, into self-help, self-healing, self, self, self anything. And Jack talked about, and it's one of his success principles, is to write down your successes. And I'll never forget, you know, because I hear Jack's voice when he talks about this. And he says, um, he told this one girl, you know, write down your successes. And she says, I ain't got no successes, Mr. Canfield. And he says, well, and he was looking at her and he was just trying to have some conversation. And he noticed that she had the most beautiful jumper on. And so he complimented her on her dress to start from there, thinking that she'd say, oh, thank you. You know, I bought it yesterday or it, whatever. And she said, thank you. I made it. And he was blown away. And he said, you made it. He's, it was plaid and all of the stripes and lines, you know, lined up perfectly. And he started talking to her about this is, is a success. You made this. And then she talked about how she has to take care of her brothers and her sisters. And I don't know, I don't really remember like where the mom was, but he said, young lady, you're more successful than some of the mothers nowadays. And just from that, he walked her through her successes. And I never forget that story because whenever I'm working with someone or having a conversation with someone and they don't think they have any successes, I like to share that story because sometimes just getting up in the morning and getting dressed is a success because there are a lot of people who don't have that, um, that energy or that power or that ability. And success we have to understand what our definition of success is. And if it's putting one foot in front of the other and just doing a little bit more today than you did yesterday, that's very, very powerful. For sure. And, and that goes back to what I shared earlier. Each, each one of these circumstances that we've lived in life, there is something so magnificent in that to help you live the reason that you're here. So uh, understanding that uh, when, when my clients start finding the gift in everything, they can't wait for things to happen to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I really like about it. Um, you know, even a, a success for this young lady was talking to Jack in a moment where she was vulnerable and ready to hear what he had to share because now in that she started looking at herself in a whole nother light. So that's an, a success in itself. Absolutely. It just like me coming across that cassette tape because I honestly cannot even remember how that came into my, my person because that's just not something that was on my radar at the time, but because it did come in. I mean, I understand now, you know, the universe put everything in the right timing, but um, you know, when we look back and we say, oh gosh, have I ever done anything that's worthwhile or worth talking about? And quite honestly, the fact that you are able to stand there or sit there and think about that question is an ability and a success. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to share something that that you might not disagree with or you might not agree with, but, um, you know, I, I don't think the universe just puts things in front of us. I, I really believe that um, we, the whole of we, so I, I believe there's three parts of us, that part that, that's connected to the, I'll, I'll say the universe, part that mm -hmm. is connected to the universe, uh, that part of us that, that is, um, you know, the non-physical of us, as uh, Abraham Hicks shares, the, the non-physical part of us, and then the 3D physical part of us. And, and I think the non-physical part of us and that is connected to all that knowing, all the universe, really creates a lot of these circumstances, if not all of these circumstances, through co-creation also, mm -hmm. to, to bring these things into our lives. So it, it's not like, oh man, that person is so lucky because the universe gave them that. The, the issue is you are exuding that energy, even if it's the non-physical part of you out there to create the circumstances in front of you that give you an opportunity to grow. So, you know, I, I would hope that um, it makes sense to people, but uh, in, in making sense, I hope you realize that that means everything in your life is a success. 
yes. everything because you're asking really by the energy that you put out, either the physical or the non-physical or the combination, you're putting out a request for the universe to bring those unlimited possibilities to you. And then now we just have to start using our thoughts and feelings. We have to start taking action to bring those unlimited possibilities into probabilities, into creation, and then into manifestation, and then into materialization. Sometimes we quit a little early and we don't bring it right in front of us, but that's not all bad either. I kind of envision it like the old, um, well, they might not be old, but I haven't watched them for a while, but the... Um, what was that uh, Aquaman cartoon where he had that sonar and so he could talk to the fish, of course, but that's like how I see it. Like my body and then this sonar that's vibrating out and then the universe. And it's like, okay, so I am here and you know, so what I'm putting out is going up there. I, I don't, I just, I've always kind of looked at it like that. Oh, for sure. I mean, it, it's true. It's electromagnetic energy. It, uh, as I, as you know, because uh, I know you did some research on me. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a science and spirituality guy. How do we, how do we bring them both together? And, you know, science tells us that that we emit electromagnetic energy out into the universe, and that is truly the language of the universe. Mostly electro out of out of our head with a little magnetic and a lot of magnetic with a little electro out of our heart and together, you know, and especially when they're in resonance, we're, we're sending out uh, probably uh, the, the best order that we could send out into the universe because it understands us when we're resonating, when we're congruent with who we are. Yeah. And that goes to something that you said a little bit earlier when you are, well, this is how I heard it when you're walking your talk, um, and you show up and your energy does not match what you're saying, people feel one thing, but they see another. And so there's an incongru inconsistency in what's showing up for the other person, mm -hmm. and it makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You bet. And it also attracts people into your life and situations in your life that aren't quite what you're looking for either, because that energy, uh, it's, it's chaotic. And energy what's the best way to, to to put this your energy attracts like energy any energy that you put out attracts like energy so if you're putting out that chaotic energy you're going to create that chaotic audience in front of you we work with entrepreneurs quite a bit and one of the most important things uh, that mary shares is let's bring your colors, let's bring your style, let's bring it all together with your quintessence, because then you're going to attract the right audience. You're going to attract your audience, the ones that are looking for you. So you not only align with your audience, but in that, we also help you align with your message. So now when you're congruent in all of that, entrepreneurs can't help but be successful. I agree. I agree. And just um, something that came to me when you were saying that for anyone watching this and they're listening to you and they're saying, well, that's all well and good. You know, Mr. Science man, Mr. N you know, airplane guy, Mr. It, whatever they're thinking. And you've got it easy. You don't understand. I have a, I have a really hard life. I've got, I've had some hard knocks and because life is all about choices is all about someone who has done something or experienced something very challenging and not allowed it to put them in a hole and stay there, but they've gone on to learn from it, grow from it and do something empowering. Will you share a little bit about what that hole was like for you? Yes. Um, well, I will say that there are a lot of holes out there that were well beyond what I've experienced. Um, but I, I have experienced ups and downs in my life. And to be honest with you, uh, with what we teach mm -hmm. and in the way that we share it, uh, I'm really excited for the people that have the big holes. Because that means your mission here is probably bigger than mine. And my mission is to help you find it and help you live it. So I'm really excited for people like that. But 
Um, you know, one of the things that happened to me, Nancy, was that I was very successful. I was successful in just about everything that I did. The things that I wasn't successful in, I quit at, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And uh, uh, that's the first time I've admitted, admitted that on audio or video. So Ooh, we heard it here first. <laughs> now, the world, now the world knows. But my pain point was there was always something missing in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt unfulfilled. And I uh, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe the next relationship will do it for me. Or like my grandfather taught me, the, the next success or being better than this person or, or being the best at this was, was going to, to fix it for me. So, you know, my military career was very successful, but I decided to, to move on and continue my flying career. My flying career was very successful and the management uh, part of my flying career was, was spectacular. Um, but once again, there, there was always just something missing for me. And, and Jack's really the one that helped me find what was missing. It was me. Mm -hmm. But before I got to the place where I went to spend a little time with Jack Canfield in, in his uh, Breakthrough to Success week, I, I had four wake-up calls. And they were pretty big wake-up calls. Three of them I didn't, pay, uh, two of them I didn't pay attention to. The last two I definitely paid attention to, and it really made a difference. So the first one was 9-11. Um, I lost a friend in flight 93 that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. I actually flew that flight one week prior. So 9-4 instead of 9-11, it might have been me in Pennsylvania. Um, but what did I do? I did exactly what Grandpa told me to do. Well, obviously, he did something wrong. I'm better than that. I never, it never would have happened to me, and I just kind of blew it off and went on with life. Um, I still felt the, the pain, and I felt the camaraderie. I felt the need for community like everyone else. But I, I still believed, it, most people call it the fighter pilot mentality. I believed it could never happen to me. Mm -hmm. So I just went on. 2003, the airline I worked for went bankrupt. Everything that I believed about being loyal, working hard, doing a good job, being taken care of, if you do all those things, was gone. I mean, I took a huge pay cut. I took actually 60%. I lost a huge amount of stock, and I lost my entire pension. And in that, once again, I, I did what a real man was supposed to do. I went out and bought three businesses to help build my retirement back up. Unfortunately, what happened through that is it wasn't something that my wife at the time enjoyed. So she kind of backed out of it. And I was in a place where I was working 95 hours a week plus, trying to do my day job, trying to keep the businesses running, trying to educate and help young kids learn how to be managers. And unfortunately, through that process, my wife ended up not happy and ended up wanting a divorce. And that was the third wake up call that finally got my attention. Mm -hmm. I, I was devastated and I was in a hole. Um, I never wanted to kill myself, but I'll tell you, there was times because I lived, I live in Colorado Springs and I worked out of Denver. There was times when I was on the road that, well, if there's an accident and I go off the road and I die, Oh, oh, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I just, at a point where I just didn't care anymore. It, it hurt so bad. So that was, that was my hole right there. But I didn't stop looking for signs. I didn't stop looking for messages. And when my current wife, Mary, came into my life, she opened my mind and my eyes to a whole nother way of, of looking at the world. And uh, that was right after I had come back from uh, Jack's work. And in that work, we did a guided meditation and there was um, a present and it, that we were on this magic carpet ride and we went up to this castle and there was a present there for us from our guiding, our guides or our guardian angel. Mm -hmm. And when I opened mine, there was a microphone in there 
And as we were going through the meditation a little bit further, I saw somebody there supporting me. And that really opened my willingness to start listening for messages. And when Mary came in and she started telling me about, you know, we all need to take care of each other because we're connected. We, you know, all the spirituality stuff that she shared with me. And I'm saying, eh, that doesn't quite fit with everything that I know in science and everything that I know in my religion. But I promised myself that I was going to do whatever came in front of me and decide later if it worked for me or not. So I just started reading books, getting into the science, uh, guys like uh, Joe Dispenza and um, Greg Braden, Debbie Ford, uh, really getting to, to know some of the different ways to look at life out there. And then I found quantum physics mm -hmm. and I started realizing that she doesn't know why she's sharing that with me, <laughs> but it, science backs up every single thing that she's saying and, and that opened my doors so that's what that's what i want to share with those people i know it was a long drawn out story and i apologize but what i want to share is yes we we all have some holes we all have something that that's really designed to wake us up mm -hmm. and then once you're awake that there's more to life there's more to me then where do we go? And the, and the answer was, there's not a whole lot of places to go. There's more and more people starting to, to help people through that process of, of waking up. But what Mary and I did was we wanted people to wake up from their own knowledge and their own understanding. So we helped them find their answers instead of going to my seminar where you're going to learn my way mm -hmm. so you can be who you're supposed to be my way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. So we wanted to share the opportunity and we call it take a quantum leap event, an opportunity to teach people to, ha to find their own answers. And then once you've got your answers, what are we going to do with them? Then we designed another program to help them get beyond the roadblocks and truly discover, create, and live what we call a miracle life. That is so beautiful. And I love that you, this about your program is that you're helping people understand how to do it their way instead of someone else's way. I think the, the way of the teachings where people are out there saying, okay, you have to follow this dogma or this guideline or blueprint, those days are quickly coming to an end because we are beginning to understand as we awaken, it's about knowing. And I use that word so, so reverently now, knowing, just knowing, like, who am I? What am I here to do? What am I here to share? And as you open up and you shine your light, it's impossible for you to not spill over onto other people and whether you're meant to teach or not. Um, I love that your message is about exactly that showing people their essence. You know, what is the you of you that you're meant to, to know and embrace. And, and one thing that I want to add to that is, this way, that way, dogma, no dogma, it really doesn't matter. If it's you and it works for you, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. There are no rights or wrongs. You have to find your way. You have to find your path. And, and a certain dogma might help you find that way. And it might, it might be the reason that you're here in, in the path that you're supposed to walk. So don't don't say, oh, well, I'm awakened and I've got to throw this away or I've got to throw that away. It, it's so important to find you. And, and you have been you all along. Yes. So you, you can't throw any of that out. And yeah. you don't want to change and do it somebody else's way or be, be somebody else or like someone else. Um, one of the most exciting things for me, because we, we do truly teach 
purpose work and we call it your unique purpose formula. It's, it's five steps. It's five questions of finding your own answers. And, and it is finding your unique purpose, which is that quintessence, the gift that you bring and, and your divine intent. And they have to all come together. But it's so exciting for me when we start looking at, okay, now, now that you know what your mission is, now that you're pretty sure of the gift that you bring to the world, let's look at your life. And it's like, whoa, I was, I was living my purpose there. Oh, I was living my purpose there. I was living my purpose there. And the next thing you know, you, you find that self-empowerment from the discovery that you've been living your purpose all along. You didn't have to wait for the angel to knock on the door and say, your purpose is. Right. It's already been there all along and, and you've just been expanding it. And now that you're more awake, now that you're looking at life and saying, ah, there, there's something that I know I'm supposed to bring to the world. Now you can open yourself up to that and let it expand more. And you might already be doing it right now. One, one of the things that I was asked just recently on, uh, on another interview that I was doing is you, you found your purpose in life. You know your purpose is to help people find theirs mm -hmm. and to open up and then how to live it. Why are you still flying airplanes? Yeah. And I said, my purpose is to help people open their hearts and shine it out into the world. And when I get done with a flight, I stand in the cockpit door and I say goodbye and try to make contact with as many people as I can eye to eye and smile and hope, help them open their heart a little bit to the world and share it. So I am living my purpose after, after each and every one of those flights. And I am free and I enjoy flying airplanes mm -hmm. and I enjoy really challenging myself. Uh, I told somebody the other day, Nancy, the, the days that I like flying airplanes is the days that the people in the back don't like. I like it when the wind's blowing hard and the rain's coming down and you can barely see out in front of you because that's when I get to bring all of my gifts of flying out into the world. So it's, it's just understanding you may be living your purpose exactly the way you're supposed to be living it right now. You just don't believe it. Right. And, and you, you believe that you're insignificant in that job. And the, tr the truth is, there isn't anybody insignificant in this world. Mm -mm. What you're doing in this now may help me live my purpose a better way and may help the people around you maybe even just stay alive to live their purpose. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that just really touched me. I, that was a great way to say that. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can you talk a little bit about your, I know you have events several times a year. Can you talk about those? Yes, I would love to. Um, the, the three day event that we offer and, and it's offered fairly regularly is called take a quantum leap event. And it truly is taking a quantum leap in awareness and understanding of those five questions in the Your Unique Purpose Formula. Who am I? What do I have to offer? Why am I here? How do I live now that I know my purpose? And where am I right now? Those five questions will open the doors wide open to, to each and every person that attends for you to discover really who, who you are at a, at a place where there will be no doubts anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can truly bring the thoughts and feelings into your creation to, to pull that into your life and to, to live at a, at a great level. And, and the neat thing about it is we bring other people in too to, to share with you. So um, uh, we've got one coming up in the near future here and, and we've got uh, a lady who's our mentor as well as a really good friend who's going to help you bring your essence and help you bring the energy into your business to really create that life in your business too. So you don't feel like you, you're, 
you're happy when you're home, but then you got to go, got to go to work in my business. She teaches you how to bring it in. Mary teaches uh, this coming event. She's going to talk about the the quintessence and and how you sh show up in the world with the clothes you wear, the colors you wear, and, and how to align with your message and how to align with your audience. And then we've got another couple that's coming that's going to speak on the third day. And they're really about how do you tell people what your why is? How do you find your story of your why, understand your why, and then bring it out into the world in the way that people can relate? And, and it's all of a sudden, what happens? When you share your story and people know what you're here for and why you're here, they want to help you. Mm -hmm. They want to be part of that. They want to they want to help you shine because in that they feel good. It's called entrainment in the energy world, the quantum physics world. When your vibration's high, the people around you seek that vibration. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, Dan and Stacy are going to share that information on day three. In all our events, we just bring in different people to to help each of us really understand ourselves as energy and, and how to bring it out into the world. And the neat thing is, as you know, the people who are coming to the event really are sending out their energy and what they need. And we're, we just, the people that come in that, oh, you, you feel right. We'll be able to provide that audience what they need through their signing up to come to the event. Oh, that, that is so wonderful. And as you were talking, I couldn't help but think to myself, if someone listens to this video, watches this video, and watches it several times, you've given so many nuggets about what someone can do if they're looking for answers within themselves. You've just shared so many within the last few minutes of this, of this interview. And you know, it's all about, are you willing to take the next step and do something about it? You know, what did you just learn? What did you take in? Don't second guess yourself. Don't say, is this what he meant? Is that whatever it meant to you? Take it and go from there. And it, it'll be right. It is. It'll just be right. And I'm, I'm going to even make it easier. Oh, good. All right. Well, first, first of all, if anybody's interested in, in learning more about our events, or what events coming up soon, just go to imaginemiracles.com, all one word, imaginemiracles.com, and the page that will be the first page that you get to explains the, the event that's coming up and, and gives you more information about that. Um, but if people go to imaginemiracles.com, Nancy Dash Mueller, I will make available to you three things. Um, first of all, I'll make available our Miracle Life Blueprint, which is six steps of truly discovering and creating your miracle life. And, and our definition of miracle is through an act of love, sharing your gifts and talents in a way that others can share theirs. So I'll make that available. Um, I wrote a book, uh, Mastering the Art of Success with Jack, and uh, I'll make available the chapter I wrote in that book. It's called Creating Your Miracle Life, so that'll be available. And then the third thing I'll make available, and, and it's going to be limited, it has to be the first five people that sign up. I'll make available a 20-minute Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session where we'll get on the phone or we'll get on Zoom. And one-on-one, -on -one, we'll talk about what's getting in your way right now and what's the next best move. That is so generous. Thank you, Vince. Thank you so much. And I, I am very, very excited for people to be one of the five. I mean, come on. If you have questions and you're asking, is this the right time? Uh, would now be the right time? Now would be the right time, you know? So that, that is so generous of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I love the fact that you said it's the right time. Um, right now, I would say our phrase that that we believe and we share more than anything else is it is time. Mm -hmm. The world is in a place right now where more people are awakening. There's expansion going on. 
Uh, and I know there's people that are watching this that says, you know, we, we look out and we don't see so much expansion on what's happening in the world and what's happening in the government. And, but really, honestly, what we're seeing is the chaos that happens as things change. Mm -hmm. When things start to change, what happens around the world? What happens in our families? What happens inside of us? We start to get afraid. And what we're seeing is the low vibration of fear in the world right now. And as we look at this fear, if we can look at it as, ah, it's showing me something about me. It's showing something that I can use to love more of me and bring more of me to the world. Now that chaos will start falling by the wayside and we'll start living a, a world that, um, as Mary likes to share, a, a heaven on earth. Oh, I love that. Well, Vince, thank you so much for being a guest today because I don't know about anybody else, but like, you know, I absolutely love sharing time with you and sharing this energy thought process with you. And it's, I, I just feel so blessed to be able to live my mission. And a big part of my mission is to have conversations daily that empower, inspire, and motivate myself and others. And you've truly done this today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I enjoy sharing the same divine intent as you share. Absolutely. Thank you. I hope you've really enjoyed this and I hope that you're going to be one of the five. So jump on it now. In the meantime, this is Nancy Muller saying ciao for now.